years ago had a very small cottage we rented in West Sussex and behind us we discovered a large forest. Um, it's really rather a fairy story. We went through the forest and found this huge mansion which was Stansted Park and it wasn't open to the public. Um, but the little chapel next door was and it was a beautiful late 18th century chapel and we walked in and the most striking thing about it was this amazing stained glass window above the altar. If I can just yeah. go into a bit more, say about the amazing stained glass window. Um, it was remarkable because here in this Christian place of worship was a beautiful early 19th century stained glass window um, with entirely Jewish iconography. All the lettering was in Hebrew. Um, the centrepiece was the Ark of the Covenant. Below it you had Aaron's rod, um, various various cherubim, um, and the five books of Moses. So the first question we asked is, why on earth? What on earth is this window doing in a Christian chapel? And that led us to the man who had built the chapel and commissioned the window, who was Lewis Way. His background's really very fascinating because he, he, was, he came from a large landed gentry family. He went to Eton, he went to Oxford, he became a lawyer, and then suddenly he became a millionaire overnight. Just by extraordinary chance of somebody with the same name as him, no relation, left him the equivalent of £25 million when he died a few years later. And he was a man who took the money, he was a religious man, um, but a funny man, he was a great writer of comic verse, and he took the £25 million pounds and he, part of it he used to buy Stansted and part of it was he was looking for a cause um, and he found one. Um, he saw something that made him realise that the cause to which he should devote this money to the glory of God, as he said, um, was the so-called conversion and restoration of the Jews, which was a great evangelical cause in the early 19th century going from taking its cue from the prophecy in the book of Revelation, from the last book of the New Testament, um, that the second coming of Jesus will only come about once the Jews have been restored to Israel, to the Holy Land, and also, and this is the catch, um, been converted to Christianity. And so Lewis Way decided to devote the rest of his life and his fortune to bring this about. Um, and I think one of the interesting things I hope about our book is the the new the the little new the, the new light it does shed on Alexander the First, um, who, as Stanley said, is a remarkable figure um, because in the retreat from Moscow after the burning of Moscow, he had defeated Napoleon. He was a great even more than Wellington. He was a great conqueror of Napoleon and therefore the most famous and the most powerful man in Europe. Um, and considering this, he has actually been neglected by historians because they find it very difficult, I think, to get a purchase on him because historians generally are quite um, rational, analytical people. And Alexander I was far from analytical and rational in many ways. He was a great Christian mystic. He decided this meant that he was in a life and death apocalyptic struggle with Napoleon, who was the Antichrist. Having defeated him, um, he was on, you know, on the downward or upward slope um, to the end of days and the second coming. And therefore, he was very receptive to Lewis Way coming to Moscow to tell him that one of the key ways of ensuring a speedy second coming of Christ was to convert and restore the Jews to out to the Holy Land. And of course, and of course, um, the Tsar um, was particularly well placed to do this as he had the largest Jewish community in the world under his, under his rule in what had been Poland and was now Russia. Way went and addressed with the Tsar's behest, he addressed all the crown heads of Europe and Wellington and Metternich at the Congress. He was this obscure but very rich Christian vicar, basically, in French, which he spoke reasonably but not fluently. He had to prepare the whole thing in two weeks, and he addressed all these people with a plea for emancipation and tolerance, which I think is a wonderful thing to do for this man. John Nelson Darby took Lewis Way's ideas, and particularly his Christian Zionism, on seven mass evangelising tours 
of the USA in the 1860s and 1870s. And there he really um, laid the foundations for the Christian Zionism um, that is an integral part of much of American evangelicalism today, and particularly of what has become, since the 1970s, um, right-wing American evangelicalism of the, what, what we would call the moral majority type. What's very helpful um, with, this, with this format is that it really makes you, con it concentrates the mind wonderfully. You've really got to get three or four points across mm. in the punchiest way, the best written and the most accessible way. And we had various things we needed to get across. One, that this was a fantastic story, which had first seduced us, you know, in Stansted Chapel all those, all those years ago. But also um, that it linked up to major historical trends like Jewish history, like Christian history, English evangelicalism. And also, of course, it linked up to the present day to Israel and the support of the American religious right for Israel. And so we had to tick those boxes. I think the principle of the division was that he, as, as Stanley is, um, has really, is, a, is a fiction person and a narrative person, he did the biographical, and is more familiar, I think, with the biographical side. He did the biographical side, the story, the journeys of Lewis Way. I did the more contextual stuff about where it intersected with wider history, whether it be the Congress of Aix-la-Chapelle, um, the Jews in Russia, um, or the evangelical movement. I wouldn't want that to imply that the bits you wrote were the bits that are actually true mm. and, the, and the chapters I wrote weren't. The bits I wrote are the ones that are much more intellectually demanding. Yes, and, <laughs> and the ones I wrote were just for laughs. Well, that's exactly, exactly, yeah.